Hello team and welcome to another ATP Geopolitics video with myself, Jonathan MS Pitts. This is Ukraine War Frontline Update for the 12th of January 2024. I promised myself a cup of tea at the end of the last video. I haven't moved. JR sent me a message saying the mapping's done. I look at the mapping, I'm like, I've got to do the mapping. So I will move soon and use my legs to uh, refresh my body with a good old cup of health elixir tea. But in the meantime... Let's have a look at the front line. If you don't know what the lines on my map mean, please pause the video and check it out there. Uh, before we go to look in more detail at the map, remember yesterday there were a number of blue pins. In fact, they were all blue pins up and down the lines, particularly in the east, where the Ukrainians seem to have had some success pushing back the Russians in a number of places. Uh, today it's going the other way, but it's not particularly hugely significant although there are some other bits of news that are coming out in favor of the ukrainians so it's a bit of a mixed bag but before we go there let's look at what general suski says russia continues offensive operations on three fronts so the russian occupying forces continue their offensive operations in kupiansk liman and bakhmut directions with the situation remaining challenging according to general suski so that is to say that in this area at the top this area around Gramina and the Serebiansky Forest, and then Bakhmut as well. Those are the three main areas, at least as far as he's concerned. He noted that the Russian army is persistently attempting to dislodge Ukrainian units from the Kupiansk front and seize Sinkivka with the goal of cutting off Kupiansk. Uh, and this is in line with the Institute for the Study of War and other sources saying that the Russians are accumulating forces for a major offensive in the Kharkiv direction somewhere, but they've been trying in Kupiansk. They've been using up an awful lot of personnel and equipment in trying to take Sinkivka and have basically failed to do so so far. In fact, the last we saw is that the Russians have been pushed back a little bit by this area of wood, woods here. In fact, Spirit Maps had the Russian control zone something like this. Andrew Perpetua had that. Both mappers have pushed back at least have pushed the Russians back at least somewhat. Quote, despite the enemy's large-scale offensive, our soldiers steadfastly maintain their defensive positions in all directions, inflicting significant losses on the enemy. Of course, you'd expect him to say something like that. But also, we do have some evidence to suggest that the Ukrainians are inflicting significant casualties on the Russians. In the Liman area, Russian troops are engaging in offensive maneuvers to force Ukrainian Forces back across the Zherebets River, accom um, accompanied by intense artillery bombardment. They are also de deploying additional assault units from Russian territory. So this is the idea that as we come further to the south, the Russians are trying. So nothing really to, to report up there particularly. Uh, but the Russians are trying to push the Ukrainians back beyond this river. It's a river that sort of comes down like that. If we, if we zoom out a little bit, I will draw for you uh, where the rivers are to give you an indication of what they're all sort of fighting over so you've got down this blue line here i'll draw my own blue line on top of that one is the oskil river then we have the jerobets river that comes up here sort of goes something like that and they've sort of crossed it in that area that they've attacked there they would really like all of this area that, uh, around here um, to be under their control uh, and that's what they're trying to do down here in the Torsky area. And these rivers sort of connect to this Sversky Donetsk River there. And then you have the Krasna River that comes pretty much down here um, uh, and into sort of Kremina itself. The Ukrainians did get across there originally at Krasna uh, in that area. But since then, have, have ceded territory to the Russians, and the Russians are halfway to the Zherebets River. But they've kind of stalled. You can see that this line, the white line, is the 30th of May. So that's now, we are in January. So May is the fifth month. So in six, uh, so seven months, coming on to eight months, the, the, we've had the Ukrainian counteroffensive, but then the Russian pushing back has achieved minimal successes. And in fact, it looks like the Russians are being pushed back in maybe a couple of those places, or at least they are just finding it very hard to continue to advance. Uh, in the Bakhmut, oh, sorry, uh, General Zersky mentioned that the Serebiansky forest remains one of the directions where the main efforts of Russian troops are concentrated. Here, 
Russian forces make unsuccessful attempts to attack Ukrainian positions with armoured vehicle support in the directions of Tulsky, Dubrova and Yampil. Uh, in the Bakhmut direction, Russian troops are exerting every effort to cross the Zversky Donetsk Donbass Canal, according to General Sursky. Uh, however, Russian forces are attempting to create favourable conditions for an offensive on Chazyv Yar and to recover lost positions near the lakes east of Kdyshivka and Kurdyamivka. Nothing that we, I, I guess we didn't know, but that's coming from the top there. But as you can see, no changes to Bakhmut, no changes to the Lam Liman front, no changes to the Kupiansk front. So while that is all taking place, the Ukrainians are doing a pretty heroic job in stopping the Russians in their tracks. Um, here we can see some gains for the Russians up the railway line by Berestova uh, from Bilohorivka, really. The railway line going up towards... Uh, Vrimka there, uh, it's a bit more success for the Russians there, a little bit of a, a concern but not the end of the world to, to lose basically any of that, that land there isn't really too troubling it's buffer zone Seversk is, is your key there um, it's going to be quite difficult to, to take Seversk for a whole bunch of reasons, topography on the way to there, the, how well it's fortified etc etc but they have made some minor advances in that area. Uh, and then as we come further down to the uh, south, there's a couple of other bits I did want to say, um, but we'll, we'll get to Avdivka. So nothing really to report about Bakhmut. Avdivka area, some small gains for the Russians, minor gains or possibly a clarification really from Deep State map to go in line with Syriac maps. Uh, in and around the, or around the water treatment area just by the Terracon in that northern part of this cauldron around Avdivka and then some small gains for the Russians in Pervomysky, uh on from uh, the Pisky direction. So the Syriac maps here says that the Russian army made new advances in Pervomysky. Uh, positions in the Ukrainian army positions in the southern part of the village are under enormous pressure and further retreats to the north and west continue as Russian troops advance Dacha by Dacha. A very ominous rhetoric there from Syriac maps seeming to indicate that it's all um, it's all very difficult for the Ukrainians and the Russians are marching uh, indubitably on. But I think it's going to be difficult for both sides. That is uh, an area that the Russians had previously been in and they've been pushed back. Now the Russians are starting to try to push or will be starting to try to push beyond, again, those May the 30th lines. Um, yeah, so activity taking place there. Uh, just to give you an indication of just the general uh, appraisal of what Russia are doing uh, and how Ukraine are doing, Tatarigami says, I found a few articles, including one from Bilt, uh, so that is the German tabloid newspaper that Julian Rupke writes for, so take that with a pinch of salt, suggesting that the Russian winter offensive has already failed. However, based on my observation, Russian forces continue to increase troop concentrations in both, both Kupiansk and Bakhmut areas. They will fail, but not yet. Uh, the quality of the Russian recruits continues to drop, and they even fill their elite units with 45-plus-year-olds unfit guys, so that on paper they meet quota. However, there are a lot of them, and they have an artillery advantage as well as a drone advantage in some areas of the front line. So that, you know, e even though there are issues with the force quality, quantity has its own, uh, or mass has its own quality. So we need to be wary of that. Um, and, yeah, the, so some interesting... Uh, points there from Tatarigami uh, and then there are these elements of uh, conditions and losses that Russian sources are communicating consistently so Chechen fighter here according to no reports well you can see it on the video according to the video uh, no report says a Chechen fighter talks about the state of affairs on the front uh, he says they are starving, drinking the water from puddles and suffering huge losses. Multiple casualties can be seen, so you can be seen in that video. I won't show it to you. He also says that they are simply sitting in dugouts and are afraid to stick their heads out. I mean, the, the footage coming out is pretty horrific. That's going to be the, the same to some degree for the Ukrainians, maybe not as bad conditions considering they are closer to their own logistics lines and it's their, their own country. Um, but in terms of you know drones hammering dugouts and trenches, the, the Ukrainians are are hemmed in as well. 
but yeah, the Russian losses are huge and morale must be pretty low, especially at this time of year when it is, is absolutely perishingly cold, literally perishingly cold. Okay, anyway, as we come on, you can see there's no changes to the Nova Mikhailivka Marinka areas, fairly significant there, a bit of uh, stabilization of those uh, of those sectors. Belika Nova Silka, nothing to report. And then we have some Russian advances in the Robotina area, as according to Syriac maps, it says, I mean, these are really very tiny. Uh, Russia army has, the Russian army has captured a new Ukrainian army position south of Robotina. I mean, it's literally tiny bit of a, a field there actually a few changes more on the map compared to that um sorry that indication uh possibly there N nonetheless you have fairly small um gains on the other hand there are now and these are more recent these are just coming out now there are other claims from Ukrainians saying that they've recaptured half a kilometer of territory near Vobove in the Zaporizhia region. That's the mayor of Melitopol, Ivan Fedorov, saying that. The specific area has been the battleground since August, of 20, August 2023, where the Ukrainians have not yet succeeded in forcing a breakthrough. Well, that's very interesting. We'll take it with a pinch of salt as well. But, in the, it, but then also in the Tokmak direction, so this is exactly where we've just seen Syriac maps claim Russians have had uh, some success. We've now got Getty saying the armed forces of Ukraine had success south of the village of Robotina. The landing, which was stormed by the Russians a few days ago, is again under Ukrainian control as well as the stronghold. In in other words, it appears that the Ukrainians have taken that back. Possibly, uh, I, well, I don't know. But this is concerning more that area. See that um, yellow polygon there that's what i call the alien's head if you remember it's it's got actually got some trenches coming out like this that look like antennae and bits coming out there anyway that whole area has been fought over it's been a really tough fight for those trench lines when the ukrainians were attacking then it was taken back it's kind of gone to both sides a number of times and it's more recently according to syriac maps is under control of the russians as you can see by their mapping there but actually, Getty is saying that that is under control of the Ukrainians uh, and that they have retaken that. Um, so some success possibly for the Ukrainians in broadly the same kind of area that, that Syriac Maps is saying there have been successes for the Russians. So it's something to look out for there. And again, it goes to show, whenever you hear this, it goes to show that the Ukrainians aren't just going to sit back and let the Russians take that territory they are going to put up a fight because i was wondering how much of a defense the ukrainians are going to be put, putting up in a number of these places and then we're going to come to Krinky. there's no changes to the front line there but it is worth dipping into what the uk intelligence update states from today and there's some big numbers here the ukrainian forces operating on the east bank of the Dnipro river have been using first person view uncrewed aerial vehicles so first person view drones Fitted with munitions to target Russian forces. Yes, yes, yes. The FPVs are being used in conjunction with artillery to target Russian forces' vehicles. With a Russian military blogger estimating 90% of Russian military equipment in the Krinky area has been destroyed. 90%. It's incredible. Now, of course, it's just one source. It is a Russian source, but... You know, it doesn't necessarily mean that's true. Russia's inability to counter the FPVs is likely due to a shortage of Russian electronic warfare capability in the area. So again, we return to this idea that the Russians in this particular area, in a very localized sense, and it's not extrapolatable across the whole front line. But in this area, the Ukrainians have an electronic warfare advantage, and they've had that for, for quite some time there. Um, and that is allowing them, the Ukrainians, to maintain that bridgehead and f attract, fix and attract the Russians as they try to push them off the, the left bank of the Dnipro. And that is still taking place. Uh, so there you go. That's the frontline update for me today uh, from me. There are some movements for, you know, for the advantage of the, the Russians. But actually, they're, they're not huge at all. And that there are potentially some gains for the Ukrainians in a number of positions. And I don't think, you know, as Tataragami was saying, I don't think it's the end of the Russian counteroffensive. Like it's, it has not failed, but I think it's in the process of failing. I don't think there the Russians have enough to make a meaningfully large difference 
to the front lines. And by that, I mean, are they going to take Donbass? Well, when they were in a much, much better shape, they struggled to take Bakhmut. It's the same thing I keep saying. But goodness me, you know, let's put this into perspective. It took them over a year, and they're still trying to do it, take that area there. Right? Uh, and actually, let's be more accurate. That area there, right? But how are they going to take, you know, how are they going to take that or whatever it might be? That. Whatever you think their objectives are. I mean, that's obviously not their maximalist objectives. But it took them over a year with better forces and with Wagner and with, you know, it. it in, in, a, in a much more commanding position than they are now. It took them that long to do that. How many of those circles can you fill this area with? And will it take, take them that many years? So we can worry about the, the, the situation that the Ukrainians are in. We can worry about the Russians. But perspective should, should tell us that the Russians are in a hell of a, of a, of a bad position. That they have absolutely failed this war has been a russian failure and every time you get a russian troll come to tell you otherwise point out what the second greatest army in the world has done in the last year what have they done since november 2022 year and a year and a year and a quarter go back a little bit further august 2022 since the Kharkiv lightning counter-offensive from the Ukrainians. What have the Russians done since November 2022? This has been an absolute failure by Russia. We must remember that. We can worry about the movement on a front line in certain small areas in this, as we are looking with our magnifying glass. The big picture is they should be pretty embarrassed at what they have achieved or what they haven't achieved. Thank you for watching. Take care. Speak soon.